Hey guys, World Leader here. Today, I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions that I get in game, Discord, and my comment section. If you have any other questions you want me to answer or you just want to say hi, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get a response to you as quickly as possible. Who knows? It might even be in the next video. So, question one. What does speed affect and is it worth investing in? Let me just start off with a really quick description that I got from my amazing Bit Heroes Wiki, by the way. Speed is a bonus that accelerates your turn rate. It is applied in combat directly on your turn rate, not your agility score. Now, just to answer that question, early in game, I would have to say speed is not the best bonus to focus on. However, it is extremely viable, if not very, very necessary for clearing some of the hardest content in the game. I would say yes, but of course, focus on what's more important on the early game. And then once you get to mid game, then you can start focusing on speed. So for the second question, how are crit chance and empower chance different? If so, which one is better to build and which one do you recommend? So I'm going to start off by saying that crit chance and crit damage go hand in hand. I'm going to give a very quick description and a few tips on that. And then I'll go on to empower. So crit chance represents how often the player can cause, you know, a critical hit. And the base crit chance for players and familiars is actually 10%. So you already start off with a base of 10% crit chance, which is awesome. Uh, crit damage now represents the damage multiplier when a player deals a critical hit. And the base critical damage for both players and familiars is going to be a bonus of plus 50%. So you already have a plus 50% crit damage bonus at a 10% chance per hit. Um, now let's go on to Empower Chance. Empower Chance gives a percent chance to empower your skill and double its effectiveness. So doubling its effectiveness pretty much essentially means just double damage. So instead of giving that 50% damage boost, it's technically the 100% damage boost. So if you have a skill that hits with 200 water damage and you empower it, that's essentially 400 water damage. So... And power chance is pretty good, especially because it's extremely easy to build versus crit chance and crit damage, of course, because you need to build both crit chance and crit damage to make it better. You know, I'd say if you can build both and build both, usually crit chance is only found in accessories, like I said, so it might be harder to get the bonus. But when you use both in power and crit, it can honestly hit like a truck. If you only want to focus one, like I said, empower all the way. So let's go on to question three. Is it better to build dual strike or quad strike? Which would you recommend? So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the description on them very quickly. And then I'll go ahead and give my answer on that. So dual strike automatically recast the same skill the player or familiar last chose. A skill that dual strikes can trigger itself again when you have a high amount of dual strike. A few things to note before I go on to quad strike, by the way, about dual strike. So if you use a target enemy skill and let's say you, you know, get a dual strike on it. If you kill the enemy with the first hit, you're probably wondering, well, where does the second hit go? Well, it actually targets the weakest health enemy next. So if they have a bait in the enemy team, just be aware if they have any kind of offensive brains and you dual strike, let's say a DPS after you kill that DPS, that dual strike could target that weakest that has that brain and that could possibly you know attack your team back so just keep that in mind another thing is if you use an attack for this skill for example and it dual strikes you actually have a chance to one kill the enemy on the first hit right but you're probably wondering well where does that one go it doesn't go to the weakest like the target enemy does but it then gets the next one in line so if you attack the furthest enemy and they're the fifth character and he dies on the first hit, he's gone, and now you're targeting the fourth with your second hit from your dual strike. So target attacks weakest afterwards if you do kill on the first hit, and furthest attacks the next furthest afterwards if you kill on the first hit. Now, to quad strike. Quad strike acts pretty much very similarly to dual strike, except it casts the scale four more times. So even though it says quad, it technically casts for like a total of five casts instead of just once so if you use a target ability let's say you will target that enemy five times so just know that it acts just like dual strike so that means the same things i said about dual strike before you know go into the quad strike 
So if I did have to say anything about Dual Strike and Quad Strike and which is better, Quad Strike is obviously way better, but way harder to build. If you're able to build a decent amount of Quad Strike from like, I'd say 15-ish percent and above, go for it. But that is pretty end game. Otherwise, I say stick to Dual Strike. It's super easy to build and honestly, pretty great. Question four, does damage bonus improve healing? Well, yes, since damage represents how much weapon damage and healing the player slash familiar can deal, then more damage means stronger heals. So yes, damage bonus definitely does improve healing. Going on to question five, what's better, block or evade? Also, does deflect work the same as evade? Kind of confusing to me. Of course, yeah, no problem. Let's start off with a description of these bonuses so you can better understand them. Block halves incoming damage. Block critical is a block proc on an enemy's critical hit. Just in case you ever see that and you're wondering what's block critical, it's, yeah. Evade negates damage from incoming hits. And just so y'all know, the base evade chance for players and familiars is 2.5. So if you ever wonder how you or your familiars that don't have evade pumps on them or whatever, evade something, just got really lucky with a 2.5% evade proc. So just keep that in mind. So think about deflect. It's pretty much the very same thing as evade, but it also returns the evaded damage back to the enemy. So just imagine evade, except it pretty much just flings it back. Another very important thing to know about block is you can still take damage. So just know that you can take empowered damage, crit damage as well, or, you know, empowered crits, which is the worst of the worst. For evade and deflect, you completely avoid any and all normal damage. There is no better bonuses between the three, but they definitely have their uses. Evade is my go-to option since it can stack very high very easily and is found in a lot of really good sets. So Evade to me is my personal favorite, but if you're trying to build something as easy and quick as possible, Block is definitely the highest percentage stacking, you know, defensive modifier there is in the game, I believe. So Block is definitely easier, but just know you will be taking damage. Question six, how does absorb work? Do you still take damage and do your pets still proc? So just to start off with it all, absorb transforms all the damage received into shielding. Absorb is calculated before damage reduction, just in case you're wondering. So if you have a bunch of damage reduction, um, don't worry, your reduced damage is not gonna reduce your shields. You're gonna get the full amount of shields. It's calculated before damage reduction. And just so you all know, shields create an additional damage mitigation layer which is the purple bar over your health bar um all sources of shielding add up to one shield meter so you don't have different layers of shield it's all one shield so standard shielding is capped at 50 percent for the player's hp except for when you you know add a mythic that'll raise it up by like 25 percent or have any kind of bonuses that'll raise your shielding, that'll be the only time it'll be higher than 50. You can never go above the threshold unless you have an item that says it does that. Absorb can be very strong, but it's very, very hard to stack, especially early game. To be honest, it's kind of very difficult to stack Absorb in the early game. You need perfect runes, perfect enchants, a specific set few of accessories that'll actually be viable. Um, there's no real crazy sets that have Absorb until very late game, and I'm talking late, late game. So Absorb, as nice as it is, it's very, very hard to build unless you're super stacked on just about everything. Um, pets are also a plus with Absorb, however. If you manage to build with Absorb, it works super great with offensive pets since you heal from your enemy's attacks, but you dish back true damage with your pets. So yes, it does still proc, but just know that um, it is the hardest, in my opinion, to build off of. So absorb viable if you can build it. And yes, it does proc pets. So this is going to be the last question. Question seven. Is damage and rage and team and rage the same? A lot of people, believe it or not, ask me this. There was literally one day where I got asked the same question by three different people, this question. So I am going to finally answer it, guys. <laughs> so to answer the question... No, they are not. They work very similar, but are two separate mechanics. Damage and Rage stores a percentage of damage received as a bonus up to 25% of the player slash familiar's HP. On use, 
the bonus enrages the next ability, increasing its potency at a one for one point value. Team Enrage works exactly like Damage Enrage with the bonus collected for each team member versus just the individual player. So it's pretty much the exact same, but just keep this in mind. The bonus is only collected for you, not your team. So although you're collecting the damage from your team, only you get that Team Enrage bonus. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If any of these questions helped you out, I'm glad to have been here to help you out. If you guys have any more questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I will either make more of these or answer them in the comment section. If I don't know the answer, I'll definitely find you one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is World Eater. Have a great one, guys. Peace. Thank you.